Hi, my name is Darshna and I am a Cornea Fellow at LJI Institute, Ambala. I passed my MS of Health two years ago and at that time I was sure that I wanted to do a fellowship. But how to choose a speciality? Some people are saying that cornea is very good, some are telling glaucoma is glamorous, some are telling pediatric ophthal is great. I was in an utter confusion and I think we can call it as after ophthal syndrome. My mentor always says that you get inspired. But to get inspired, I think we should know the people who are already working as a specialist surgeons. During our residency, we learn from our teachers but we get very less chance to see the lives of the specialist surgeon. To fill in this gap, we at LJI Institute Ambala decided to bring it to you this video series called After of Thal. I'll take you through After of Thal series in 5 episodes or 5 weekends. In this journey, we'll ride through the lives of 26 super specialists across the country. So let's get ready for the ride. I chose cornea uh, not by you know my choice. In in fact, it was an accident. So my interest was uh, very much in retina. Definitely not an arranged marriage. It was a long drawn love affair. I always wanted to be a general surgeon. Work is worship for me. So many challenges that I can't even explain. Our first video in this series is cornea Q. Cornea Q lena hai bhai. We will interview six cornea surgeons across the country who are in this field for at least a decade and have made a mark in this field. It is indeed an honor for me to introduce our panel of cornea stars. Dr. Virender Sangwan, Director of Innovations, Dr. Shroff Charity Eye Hospital, New Delhi. Dr. Praveen Vadavali Krishna, Head, Cornea and Refractive Surgery Services, LV Prasad Eye Institute, Hyderabad. Dr. Vikas Mittal, Medical Director, LJI Institute, Ambala. Dr. Rajesh Fogla, Senior Consultant and Head, Cornea Department, Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. Dr. Geeta Ayer, Senior Consultant, Cornea Department, Sankara Netralaya, Chennai. Dr. Namrata Sharma, Professor and Head, Department of Ophthalmology, RP Center, Ames, New Delhi. Let us ask them our first question. See, we all know that we are going to live with our specialities all our lives. Isn't it like marriage? We are going to stay with it forever. Let us ask these star cornea surgeons whether for them cornea was a love marriage or an arranged one. Can we hear from our lady panelist first? Dr. Sharma, please. Hello everybody, as far as my choosing of the speciality was concerned when I finished as a post-graduation at that time there was a lot of interest in lasers and ophthalmology because they were uh, new uh, when I was a post-graduate so my interest was uh, very much in retina and that is what I wanted to do I wanted to join as a senior resident in retina but uh, in our centre uh, we join as per the vacancy so when I got my joining it was into cornea so for me, it was uh, by force or by default that I came into cornea and cornea uh, was not my first choice at that point in time but of course when I look back retrospectively, it is cornea and cornea that I, I, I would always want to do. Thank you Dr. Sharma for those frank remarks. May I request Dr. Ayer to share her views? Uh, it definitely was not a love marriage and I don't think we can even call it an arranged marriage for that matter uh, because I vividly recall that day when I um, gave my uh, fellowship interview after having passed out as the best uh, postgraduate student um, of ophthalmology in Shankar Nitralia that year uh, when I appeared for the fellowship interview. Uh, Konya was definitely not uh, uh, on my priority list. Believe me when I say that it was probably the last on my priority list. And when asked what I wanted to take, I must have listed out everything else. Glaucoma, pediatric ophthalmology, uh, uvia, neuro-ophthalmology, medical retina. And um, uh, Dr. Prema Padmanabhan was there, uh, very much there, sitting during the course of the interview. And somebody else asked me, you know, um, if I wanted cornea. And I categorically, I, I, I just refused to look at her. And I categorically said, uh, no, I don't want cornea. And uh, uh, 
you know when you think of destiny versus uh, free will probably what happened in my uh, situation was uh, sheer destiny uh, because uh, uh, call it a turn of events and ultimately uh, uh, when you know i i did take up konya as the uh, specialty and uh, i had to go and report to her as the head of my department i was so red faced with embarrassment because you know just a couple of weeks back i had so categorically refused to take up konya as my uh, field of uh, uh, specialty and the two people whom i would probably say i'm indebted to uh, for being in this uh, field are uh, dr k ravi shankar he was our um, academics in charge uh, and uh, he's still a father figure to me and of course dr prema padmanabhan herself uh, she um, is a person who is a huge inspiration to all of us anyone who's trained in the konya department of sn uh, uh, she is a huge inspiration that's the story of how i got into konya and uh, the rest of it is all there for all of you to see thank you dr ayer for telling us the beauty of natural pull against the will let us listen to the guru of cornea gurus now dr sangwan please i chose cornea uh, not by you know my choice in in fact it was an accident and uh, how what happened was during my ms in medical college rohtak i was learning things which were very old and i realized that the skills i am picking up are not good enough for me to practice i or ophthalmology for next 40 years therefore i looking for enhancing my skills then one of my friend dr ashish bansal told there is a institute called lv prasad i institute in hyderabad just now it has opened two years back you come and do a cornea fellowship i asked what what do you mean by cornea fellowship he said dekho wo aise hi bolte hain cornea ke fellowship hai lekin isme acha cataract seekh loge cataract acha aayega to kama paoge so i just went there for an interview and i got selected and that's how i landed up in cornea in lb thank you dr sangwan let us hear from dr vadavali now that's a difficult question to answer because uh, the origins go back to before uh, of the moji actually started so before uh, i chose of the moji as a sub specialty uh, i always wanted to be a general surgeon and uh, after general surgery I wanted to uh, actually be out there in the ER, uh, maybe cutting open abdomens, uh, maybe uh, cutting open uh, the thorax, saving lives and getting getting my hands bloody. And that's what I uh, wanted to be as a doctor. But uh, uh, I missed out on getting a general surgery seat in my counselling, and uh, then ophthalmology was another choice. and i uh, settled in ophthalmology with the thought process that uh, once i finish ophthalmology then probably uh, i would uh, choose a field that probably would mirror sir and so when i finished uh, my ms and i it was time to uh, look for a fellowship i chose oculoplasty as my first choice but interestingly uh, at the time that i had my fellowship interview a uh, seat in oculoplasty was not available at uh, Lee Prasad Institute which was the choice of the place that I wanted to train in uh, and the second choice for me was cornea so interestingly though I wanted to start off with uh, being in a specialty that uh, would be very bloody I ended up in a specialty that had uh, absolutely no blood so uh, I don't know if you can call that a love marriage it probably was arranged but it certainly was my second choice and uh, not a choice uh, that came uh, out of the team thank you dr vadavali can we have your views dr fogla on this choosing cornea sub specialty was definitely not an arranged marriage it was a long drawn love affair during the post graduation you go through different sub specialties and you tend to develop an affinity towards a particular branch So for me, cornea was very fascinating. Although at that point of time there were not as many procedures in cornea as what you see today, uh, corneal transplantation was the only major corneal surgery being performed, whether for optical or therapeutic. And excimer laser had just uh, started, so 
that was again something very fascinating to be able to correct refractive errors in a very precise manner. I had good mentors, Dr. Prema Padmanabhan, Dr. G. Sita Lakshmi and Dr. Srinivas K. Rao, who did play a major role in influencing me to choose cornea as a subspecialty. So I think the role of the mentor is also very important, which helps you decide as to what subspecialty you're going to choose. Uh, right from my MBBS days, I was al always more inclined towards a surgical branch because I find that to be more definitive. In, in the cornea subspecialty, uh, corneal transplantation was something really gratifying. To see somebody come with an opaque cornea and to operate on that and exchange it with a donor cornea and restore corneal clarity and vision uh, really uh, made me uh, look at it at a, in a very different way. And I think that uh, kind of influenced me to choose cornea as a subspecialty and I decided at that point of time that yes, this is something that I would like to pursue a career further. So overall, I think it's the, the exposure to the subject, the mentors that you have, and with, with these two things in mind, you have to uh, make up your mind as to what, what your future uh, career is going to be in ophthalmology. Thank you, Dr. Fogla. Yes, it's your turn, Dr. Mittal. So after my post-graduation, I was doing a job in Vilipuram and one of my FACO cases ended up with endothelial decompensation. I still remember that Bawaji. When he used to come in my OPD, I used to feel really sad. And the sight of that particular edematous cornea was, uh, uh, it used to bring a lot of guilt. And I was really disturbed for, you know, good uh, few weeks. I used to imagine, I used to dream that somehow can I go inside his AC and change somehow this endothelium. So that thought was going on for continuously many weeks. During the same time, uh, my wife who was doing her fellowship in uh, Shankarnitra in Chennai, she told me and called me up and said that see there is a, a conference coming up on this weekend and you can come to Chennai. So that was a good uh, reason and uh, you can easily take a leave. I thought that I'll go and I, I entered that conference room very casually. We were sitting in the back row, last row and um, I was just chit chatting with my friends and suddenly this, this there was something which caught my attention. Uh, there was this doctor called Dr. Mark Perry who was showing a surgery which he termed as BLEK and he was actually going inside the AC and changing the endothelium with his instruments. I was and I was stunned. I was totally frozen. I still remember where the AC went was there, and where was Dr. Pema, Dr. G. and Rao, Dr. Fogla, Dr. Terry. Where all they were they were standing. I still that particular picture is still very clear in my mind. So uh, at that time, I think um, a decision was taken, and I was sure that I wanted to take up cornea, and that's how I landed up in Ali Prasad Institute and did my cornea fellowship. So you may call, call it um, a love marriage. Wow, what a coincidence. Thank you for sharing. So, it was love for some and arranged for others. Whatever way the relationship with Cornea started, but it lasted for more than a decade. Dear Star Cornea Surgeons, what kept you going? What is that spark in Cornea which keeps you so much passionate about it? Let's hear from the most experienced panelist, Dr. Sangwan, please. I have been in Cornea now almost 25 years. And the daily kick I get is by doing excellent Cornea surgeries, especially when some of my patients tell me how it has changed their life. For me, it is just a corneal transplant, but for them, it's a new world. It's a life-changing surgery. Like one of my patients from Dehradun, she underwent a surgery under, uh, for catoconus corneal transplant several years ago. Whenever she comes, she'll bring a gift. I tell her, why do you do that? She said, doctor, you don't know what you have done. After my marriage, I've seen, I started seeing how my husband looks, how my kids really look, how is the nature all around me. You know, it's a life-changing experience for me. So on daily basis, doing these things makes me very, very happy. Other things, teaching. I really love training the cornea surgeons for the future. 
and third kick I get is by you know trying and discovering or researching new technologies. Like now, currently I'm doing liquid cornea uh, for the corneal surgery. Like what I have worked on last 20 years, the limbal stem cells. Now I feel the liquid cornea is something which is going to change how we uh, practice cornea in future. Thank you, Dr. Sangwan. Ma'am, it's your turn next. So cornea itself keeps you going and uh, to begin with, uh, although I had my thesis in cornea, but I was more interested in cataract and refractive surgery. And then I went along uh, down the line, I realized that cataract and refractive surgery is something, you know, which everybody is doing. So I wanted to do something in cornea, some, some path breaking studies, some path breaking, uh, you know, learnings. Uh, in cornea and ocular surface for that matter which would be which would make a difference which would make a difference to the way we treat the patients for instance uh, chemical injuries for instance Steven Johnson syndrome for instance ocular cicatricial pamphagoid etc so uh, uh, these things they uh, make a lot of uh, you know if you if you do any study in these fields would make a lot of difference because not all ophthalmologists are wanting to or willing to treat these patients so, uh, corneal transplantation itself, uh, you know, is something which keeps you going because uh, that gives you a different kind of a high, it gives you a different kind of a pleasure and when you innovate techniques in corneal transplantation surgery or you uh, do techniques uh, which have come in corneal transplantation uh, from a full thickness cornea to now a partial thickness or a customized approach where you do a layer by layer uh, uh, corneal uh, replacement. Uh, initially we were doing corneal transplantation then ocular surface came with a big bang and it came with vengeance I should say and there were so many uh, solutions to problems which, which were there in the ocular surface which earlier people used to just uh, give lubricants and then there were path breaking studies and results you know stem cell procedures uh, stem cell laboratories cultures uh, endothelial cell cultures limbal stem cultures so it is one field which has you know continuously evolved and I think this evolution, this change, uh, insight and peep into new things and uh, it has so many possibilities that uh, one lifetime is not enough for it to you know explore completely. Uh, if you see any other surgery it is all about the patient but it is never about another aspect which is there in cornea and that is the donor. So I think uh, it is multifaceted and these are the things uh, which you know keep going. I think cornea just adds a spark to your life. Thank you Dr. Sharma. Sir, can we hear it from you? Being a corneal surgeon, having the ability to make a person see better, especially when he or she has given up hope of being able to see someday, gives a great deal of satisfaction. I can remember uh, in the early part of my career, uh, one day I had a patient who came in with bilateral thermal burns and the first look when I look uh, when I examined the patient I thought that it's impossible to repair this eye because externally both the eyes look badly burned and it looked like as if these eyes you, you cannot possibly do any surgery to restore the eyesight but after performing multiple surgeries and over six months to one year and using artificial cornea keratoprosthesis, we were able to restore 90% eyesight uh, in one of the eyes of this patient and post-operatively when with this new eyesight when he looked at his family especially wife and newborn child whom he had not seen for the past uh, more than one one and a half years I think the joy both for the patient and his family members it was priceless I think it is these moments that really make, make you feel that yes, I, I chose the right, right subspecialty and this hunger of fire has to be there in you, you know, when you choose a particular subspecialty, you should be able to give more than 100% to each and every patient. Thank you, sir. Dr. Vadavali, please, can we have your views, sir? Well, it's very simple. The drive and your, uh, when you strive to achieve perfection, I think uh, you will find that cornea is your most natural specialty. Uh, when you're a coronal surgeon, you get to do cataract surgeries, you do refractive surgeries, you do a lot of coronal transplants and you take care of a lot of patients. So 
in refractive surgery and cataract surgery, the uh, buzzword is perfection. You have to be accurate, you have to be perfect, and you have to be repeatable. Now, if you bring that learning into cornea and apply the same principles of being accurate and of being predictable in your cornea transplants, in your DSEC surgery, your DALs, your TMEX, as well as your pediatric keratoplasties and your other keratoplasties that you do, I mean, that is when you start to reach the pinnacle of satisfaction and success in corneal diseases. Even infections and even disorders where you want to make sure that the patient gets away with the minimum amount of impact on vision is probably what will drive you as a corneal surgeon. And also remember that the results of whatever you do to the cornea are out there for everyone to see. For a corneal surgeon, whatever you do is out there for the patient as well as for your colleagues, as well as for your students to look and see and learn. So that is the challenge that actually keeps you going. And the challenge to achieve that perfection every single time that you actually operate or take care of a patient is what keeps me going. Thank you, Dr. Vadavali. Let us hear from the epitome of grace. Dr. Ayer, please. I think uh, uh, patients uh, teach us every day a lot of things that we learn. We learn from their grit and their determination. One of the biggest setbacks in the field of uh, cornea has been uh, uh, the uh, after effects of uh, conditions like Stevens Johnson syndrome and chemical injuries which especially affects young adults, teenagers, sometimes children which in a matter of you know literally minutes overnight uh, changes the life of these uh, individuals and literally pushes them into darkness and uh, to be able to do something to give them some semblance of normalcy and uh, to be able to give them back some amount of vision so that you know they can around being normal to some extent is uh, such a huge uh, gratification and uh, when you see them come back to you with all their gratitude yes but with so much of confidence and independence instilled in them because of the little something that you have been able to do for them it gives you the motivation to continue to do the work we have uh, young kids who have now um, grown up who are working in multinational companies, who are uh, bankers, who are research scientists. Uh, some of them have a career processes in the eye and to see them in that kind of a position uh, is such a huge motivation that helps us to continue to go on with this kind of work that has a lot of challenges uh, in the uh, journey. Uh, we go the full way, there's nothing that uh, uh, is uh, half done or half hearted and uh, like we always say the three words that really don't exist in our vocabulary uh, for these patients are uh, best left alone so that really doesn't exist uh, for us and every patient teaches us uh, and motivates us to continue to do the work that we are doing thank you ma'am dr mittal it's your turn now so one year out of my fellowship I was in practice and uh, I wanted to do endothelial keratoplasty. So I somehow managed to learn it. And uh, I, when I posted my first case, you know, doing that dissection and then doing that surgery, it was uh, DSEC FACO combined uh, in a patient of Fuchs. And then, you know, it, it, I could do it successfully in first attempt. And, you know, actually I could go inside the AC and change the endothelium. And then when I did, I was going home, I still remember I was driving and I was talking to Dr. Bala who was uh, my consultant in LVPI and I was telling him, Dr. Bala, I have done DSEC, you know, and the feeling was same, uh, which was equal to uh, holding my elder son in my hands and who was born just a few few months back. And that Babaji is still 6'9", you know, around uh, uh, more than uh, a decade after the surgery. Then came this, uh, see, uh, mucous membrane grafting. If, if in during our fellowship days in SGS patient, all we used to give was just lubricants. But in mucous membrane grafting, you can actually take this membrane from the lips and drape the inner side of the lids. And the sick cornea starts shining. Uh, the, the patient can open the eyes. 
we did this surgery in a one and a half year old baby and who we knew otherwise would you know the eye would go blind four years later the child is smiling going to school it's just really amazing keratoprosthesis processes it's wonderful to fix that pmma cylinder into the cornea and then suture into the into the patient's eye from hand motions next day patient become 2040 it's let you know if you see when you do the stem cell transplant and see those beautiful cells growing on the surface is and then uh, eye which is totally closed and really bad and then suddenly starts seeing dmek dmek the, the my favorite surgery all you have to do is just remove this that desperate membrane only and place it into the patient's eye doing that surgery again is it it gives a lot of kick and it's not just surgeries you know uh, managing infections dry eye dlk keratoconus management so many things and doing all those surgery gives me a lot of kick and seeing that smile that million do- billion dollar smile from the patient size on, on the patient's face i think that gives me even a v- very good high so i think uh, managing these cases challenging cases day to day and seeing them satisfied that is the main spark and thankfully i i get it uh, every day uh, every day of my practice thank you after listening to this you might be getting some idea about your own sparks we will take a break here let's meet up tomorrow same time for the rest of the episode more interesting stuff coming up stay tuned and stay inspired now uh, with the knowledge that i can explore in so many fields if i take up cornea you should have a keen interest in the subject you have to be passionate about your work what i know is there are few things that i begin to understand about myself and one of them is that i can live with unpredictability so like i said earlier uh, after every 3 years like it happens in everybody's life you are on the roads 